Ben, before before we get into everything you're doing now, let's go way back to childhood. Um, we talked about it very for like ten yeah. seconds about how your like upbringing, 12 right? Twelve seconds yeah. about how your upbringing has has you know really kind of framed who you are today. But can you tell us a little bit about how you grew up, what your family was like? Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> I, I think yeah, we managed to get like twelve yeah. to fifteen seconds of yeah. conversation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was uh, telling Daniel a little bit how like I, I I kind of like think back and like surprisingly the like very much the product of both of my my parents and they're super different people. Um, so my mom was like in her twenties, she was a park ranger in Utah and Alaska, and was kind of very much an environmentalist her whole life. She does a lot of like wildlife rehabilitation. Um, so kind of like that. I'm assuming was sort of the, the genesis of kind of my interest in the environment and sustainability. I mean, we always went camping and stuff. And then on the other hand, my dad was a, a pilot in the Israeli Air Force. Uh, he was a mechanical engineer. So I kind of like started my engineering curriculum when I was like three. <laughs> and, uh, and like, yeah, I mean, I would ask like, what is that? How does that work? And, yeah. and he would never answer. He'd be like, I don't know. What do you think it is? How do you think it works? And so, like, that's a really frustrating and effective way to, to learn how to engineer. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of credit my mom with, like, the sort of moral compass and, like, the decision to, like, I guess the, the reason that, I, like, I'm trying to do stuff that actually solves, like, what I consider at least important problems. Yeah. And then I kind of credit my dad with, like, having the capabilities to to do that mm -hmm. as best as I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. That that kind of love for engineering and inventing and creating took you into MIT. But when when did that match up with the side that your mom taught you about solving these problems that really matter? So like I I I actually like the aerospace engineering, like I kind of wanted to I kinda of wanted to do what Elon Musk is doing now and like he got started with a goal of, you know, uh, making humans multi-planetary. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, partly that would just sound really cool, but, like, it seemed <laughs> like if we don't get our, you know, act together, that seems like, you know, that's, like, the biggest existential threat, but, like, mm -hmm. that seems like an insurance, insurance policy against that. Um, but I had always been pretty interested in, in renewable energy. Um, I had been involved in the energy club at MIT, um, in the wind group in particular. Um, and I had, uh, I don't know, sometime in the second half of, 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 as an undergrad, I interned at SpaceX for the summer. It was like super cool yeah. experience. Um, but I kind of realized that, you know, if I if I wanted to like continue in, in the aerospace world, I would like design a widget yeah. You know, and I, I wasn't, you know, that interested in just designing a widget. I kind of liked tackling the, the whole problem. Um, and I had a professor who would describe problems as either like a juicy orange or yeah. not a juicy orange. And in aerospace, it's not a juicy orange. Yeah. Like, it's pretty much all, or at least in, in kind of rocketry, yeah. uh, it's kind of all been done. Like, you mm -hmm. can squeeze, but you're not going to get a whole lot more innovation out of it. Mm -hmm. Whereas, uh, Clean energy, sustainability was like a really juicy orange. It's a yeah. problem where you know there's a lot of a lot of juice to be squeezed. Totally. Um, and so I, I kind of like shifted my focus um, at that point after the, the internship at SpaceX. Mm -hmm.